Thank you so much to all the channels that we've just seen in the credits that are participating in this care collab for the general care or aspect treatment, keeping the faith, troubleshooting regarding seedling orchids. The response has been tremendous and I really appreciate everybody that has responded to the Care Collab Alert video. Thank you for being here, for taking the time to do your videos. All the videos will be linked in my description. And if my growing method and my climate is not conducive to your growing method, your climate, including the medium, then there are so many channels that have come together for this Care Collab to discuss seedlings, orchid care, and troubleshooting including setbacks and keeping the faith. Paige, I hope that you find nuggets in each and every video. Everybody who clicks on this video, thank you so very much for being here. Also very much appreciated. And I hope that you too will be able to find nuggets of information that will help you successfully grow your seedlings on to becoming blooming size. This is not a one fits all kind of care guide. Seedlings are a league of their own. They usually do not respond to what they would as a mature plant. So there's a lot of back and forth regarding what is best. I hope I do this care collab justice because seedlings could be a topic we can discuss for an hour and I'm going to try and be a little bit more condensed with regards to the information that I give regarding what I do, what I failed at, how I troubleshooted, if that's a word, in order to make a seedling successful and stay alive. I am not gonna talk about deflasking because I tried that once and I failed miserably. I don't know if I'm gonna try that again because space is an issue in my environment and I do not supplement with heat mats or humidifiers. So this is pretty much raw kind of seedling care if you do not have all the other equipment to support the needs of a seedling over a long period of time until it gets established. So just again, I do not have a humidifier. I do not use heat mats. I go with what I see, what my temperatures are doing, what time of year it is, and how the orchid is responding or not responding. That was just, I know, a very long disclaimer, but it is a delicate subject. We're dealing with delicate little plants, but I needed to put that out there because I am in Southern Spain and conditions are completely different in my environment. And in the winter, I grow in a dining room setting under blurple lights, artificial lights, and I can get temperatures down to 14 degrees Celsius. So bear in mind, none of these seedlings are getting babied the conventional way. I am going to discuss troubleshooting, keeping the faith, understanding the orchid attributes, and recognizing setback without panicking. So if you have made it this far, thank you. I'm gonna give you the biggest pointer of all right off the bat. And if you continue to watch the video, thank you very, very much. The biggest pointer when it comes to seedlings is you might as well hang up a do not disturb sign. When you get your seedlings into the house, you've cleaned them up and put them in the media that you believe to be correct for the next three, four years. Do not disturb, leave it alone. 90% of the time that works. 10% where it doesn't work is if you were, for example, to get a weak seedling in. It's hard to recognize a weak seedling because they usually come out of a very, very pampered environment and you think you're doing something wrong. 90% of the time, you're not doing anything wrong. It is actually the plant itself. This is Catlia leopoldii and this is my candidate for troubleshooting. When it comes to inorganic growing, there is no real issue about pot size different with organic media. But in organic growing, your pot can be as big as you want and you put your seedling in as long as you can maintain whatever requirements the seedling has in the size of the pot that you want. With the Leopoldii, when I got that in, there were two. I speak in past tense because this one here clearly is a goner. Seeing as I have a pot that I can put 
two seedlings in, I can kind of reduce the space in the pot by putting two seedlings in a pot and it doesn't look to be oversized. Again, pot size doesn't really matter, space does. But you can put as many seedlings into a pot as long as you can keep up with their needs. So in my case, when I got my Leopoldii, I thought, all right, I want my Leopoldii seedlings to be in this pot for at least four to five years undisturbed. And then I watched and observed. Another point is that seedlings don't normally acclimate fast. They take a long time when they've come out of their perfect environment of a nursery or even a lab setup where everything is hunky-dory for them regarding lights, humidity and nutrition. Then they come into your environment, are exposed to the natural ambient air, different media, travel stress, etc. They take much longer to acclimate than a mature orchid would. So that needs to be taken into the equation as well. So my Leopoldi, I went in and did nothing, nothing, again, inverted commas, for about a year and a half. When I say nothing, nothing that I could see visually in order to troubleshoot. If a seedling stays in place and does nothing for such a long time, it is acclimating, in my opinion, and this is an example of doing nothing that I could see that would be conducive to making this seedling of the Lelia crispa happy. But doing nothing is also a good thing in my books because that means it's not declining. And that is a good thing because nothing doesn't mean just necessarily growth or roots. It means actually not declining. So don't intervene, continue what needs to be done. When it comes to troubleshooting, however, after a while, when you see it's trying to push new growths, as is the case here, and they fail, then normally there's a root problem. And I go back to my principle of do not disturb. The more the seedling is disturbed, messed with, tampered with, repotted, the more it can get stressed out, it won't ever settle, and then you would lose the seedling because it's too much stress. So I did not intervene and I had two pieces and I thought, never mind, if one fails, I have another one. After two years of doing nothing, finally one actually started to produce roots and a tiny little growth and you can see how desiccated that is. After two years, I thought, okay, my experience with this orchid here is based on the order and where I got it because I saw many, many other very, very poor orchids in that order. So I got myself a replacement from another nursery, another Leopoldii. And because this one is only one orchid, I put it into a smaller pot. Again, I could have gone into a bigger pot, but my troubleshooting was, if I overestimated the size of the pot here and it didn't work, my bet is as safe as it can be if I put the seedling into a small pot. So I did the opposite of what I would normally do putting it into a pot and then do not disturb for four years or five years, for example. Knowing the attribute of an orchid is also fundamental to be able to say, can I leave this in the pot at least three to four years? Three, to, three years is my absolute minimum. I do not want to disturb my seedlings at all. I want them to gather strength and I want them to crowd the pot before I put them into a bigger pot. So that is my thinking and knowing the attribute is important. And I recognize that Leopoldii from this experience is quite the slow grower, not just in the acclimation process, but as a grower as such as well. I am not going to discuss whether it is my setup or not, because there are examples where it says these guys are working very well in my setup. And then there is one that isn't. So this is not a discussion about whether the setup is on or off. I've put examples out that show that the setup is not the issue. In my dry climate, this setup is paramount for the high humidity that seedlings need. And I remind you again, I do not use humidifiers ever. So this self-watering or semi-hydro setup is paramount for my success with seedlings. But my troubleshooting here was I'm getting myself a replacement. This is not looking good based on the history of the order that this one came in. And I just wasn't going to risk losing everything and not finding another seedling for a long time. 
And then I was quite happy if I was going to lose this. Okay, fine. The order that this one came in, it's slowly, slowly decreasing in numbers in my collection. This is where I come to the fact that the health of a seedling as you get it in is paramount as well. It is such a shame to be putting so much effort in, time and dedication to keep a seedling happy while it is acclimating and only to realize after two and a half, almost three years, you didn't get a great plant. That is not on you. That is the nature of the game and I would not get discouraged by that whatsoever. Now I wanted to, in this video, unpot this one and show all the roots. I will do that in a separate video because this is, in my books, going to be long, chitty chatty and I didn't want to make it too long. So this is my troubleshooting result. A replacement to see if the seedling that you initially got is a bad dud. And it turns out that it was a bad dud because this one was acclimating for one year in my collection and look what it's doing with a stonking new growth right here. I mean, it's by no means close to blooming size. I have a long way to go with this Leopoldii, but the difference of one and a half years in my collection, as opposed to almost three. And the setup is the same. The only difference is the pot size. So keep that in mind if you have seedlings. Acclimating can take up to 15 months. If it is not doing anything, including declining, it's fine. It's just getting its bearings, as is the case with this one. This one was starting to decline. That is why I went for a replacement. So it was doing something, but in the reverse and then it's time to react. It is very difficult to save a seedling that is already on the decline. It is um, almost impossible. So if it is an orchid that you really want in your collection, I highly recommend find a replacement, even if it is a seedling and even if it means you have to start again. But a seedling in decline, it's almost impossible to bounce back. So I'm not even going to go into the intricacies of what that would take because then you would probably need a humidity tent and a lot of other kind of extra equipment to make it work, and that is not even guaranteed. A healthy seedling will respond after 15 months at most, even sooner. If a seedling comes already with a new growth into your collection and a new growth has started, you're off to a great start. But once that new growth develops and progresses, you can also expect a year and a half of it doing nothing once again. As long as it doesn't show signs of decline, you are okay with that seedling. The fact that it matured a new growth that it came with is based on the environment that it came from. And then it stops. It's possible it stops. And that is it's acclimating itself to where you are now and where it finds itself and then it starts again. So doing nothing, I will always say, is a good thing as long as the nothing doesn't mean decline. And that is my example of the CRISPR. I've had this orchid also a oh, year, year and a half now, and it started a new growth when it arrived, which was, wow, really, really, I was happy about that, but what I didn't know about this orchid, and this brings me to the point of know the attributes of the orchid in order to understand what is it doing. I didn't know that the CRISPR was a slow grower. So it matured this growth very slowly over the course of the year that I've had it. And only now is it starting on one new root. Maybe under that pseudobulb, there's another one going down. What I can see is one. This is, in my books, it is still doing something, but not according to what it could be doing, considering how I've cared for it. So it is the attribute of the orchid that also determines how fast will a seedling grow. And it is up to us then how to keep it happy. But there has been no decline. While this was growing, the roots in the pot weren't very abundant. And you can see that some are already from the old, when they arrived, they are not of any use at all. 
but it grew the new growth without desiccating and taking down any part of the other parts of the orchid. And that was okay for me. That's a signal it's gonna be okay. Keep flushing, 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 flushing. Oxygen is paramount for seedlings. In a water retentive media that must never dry out, especially in my climate. The humidity factor has to be quite high around the orchid. There's a lot of dehydration that can come out through the leaves with dry air. So I flush every third day in the summer and about every five, six days in the winter. Whether the reservoir still has water in it or not, I flush. Every flush, I provide seaweed, 40 parts per million of seaweed. And the alternate flushes are 40 parts per million of fertilizer mixed with seaweed. But I am so, so conservative on fertilizer when it comes to seedlings because of my dry climate. I do not want to burn the roots. However, there's a little bit of a catch here. In my case, I'm okay with low fertilizer, 40 parts per million every second flush, alternating seaweed, fertilizer, seaweed, fertilizer. If my ambient air gets to the point that it gets a little bit too dry and the wind is warm and hot, I will fertilize in the morning, just pouring the water through and letting the reservoir fill. But after an hour or two, I'm going back and just flushing through with regular seaweed because I do not want the minerals or the salts to burn my roots. Even at 40 parts per million, I am so cautious because the energy that a seedling exudes to grow roots is exponential. And if they fail, it's a setback. Doesn't mean the orchid will fail, but it is a setback because now the seedling has to figure out how do I generate energy for more roots it could then fail. Not necessarily have to fail, but it could. So the roots are so precious that they're like gold in my eyes, and I will not allow any fertilizer to burn the roots, and then I will probably double flush just to be on the safe side. And that is also why moss is doing so well because of how wet it is in there, and very, very low on the fertilizer and the moss is thriving to the point, actually I have to remove some of it around the base there, but you get my point. Doing this every three days, every five days, when a seedling is doing nothing is very, very important. And before it would start to decline. Seaweed doesn't have any MPK, but it has 16 other minerals that are vital for the health of the orchid. Whether you grow in organic, media or inorganic media makes no difference at all. The difference with the NPK in organic media is there should be a little bit higher nitrogen provided when growing in organic media because the nitrogen is also being used up by the bark when it comes to the process of decay. I normally say fertilize as little as possible. Don't want to burn the roots. But in organic media, it is important that there's a little higher nitrogen provided to the seedlings to help with the growth, simply because the organic media is also absorbing nitrogen as part of the decaying process. I would never go above 40 parts per million when it comes to seedlings of this size. Here's another little one that has been with me for three years now, and if I could find the picture of unwrapping this one out of the box. I can tell you, you would not see any different except one leaf is missing in the back. And well, this one is yellowing now. In here, I have a Cattleya leopoldii I crossed with something else. I'm not going to remove the tag because it is touching that precious root back there. You see how brown that is? That is 40 parts per million of fertilizer and I didn't flush through the second time. And the tip stopped growing. Now, luckily this root is long enough, there's enough to it, and I'm just going to boil it down to, okay, don't do that again. But there was one moment of not paying attention. It'll be okay, it is starting a new growth, but this one, 
is also a classic example of almost three years of inadverted commas nothing, but that also includes no decline. I had one growth last year, this one. So basically this little seedling has two leaves with which to photosynthesize. But again, if knowing the attributes of the orchid is so important, and it is a Leopoldii, and I have Leopoldii experience with the other ones, it is fundamental to understand the attributes of an orchid in order then to not disturb it for as long as possible, for as long as possible. If it is necessary to tweak a setup because it didn't work out the first time, I am always for intervention. But if it's possible to intervene while the orchid remains established in the pot by adding things to the top of the media for more humidity, or as in my case, I used Akadama on some other seedlings, then it is better to intervene with the climate of the pot while the orchid is still in there, as opposed to taking it out and changing the whole thing. And I'm showing this little Aberrant's Polysema cross because being a dendrobium, having a fine root system, small pot, I knew that it would work in lava rock as semi-hydro for years and years and years as a seedling. Because when I got it, it was just these little guys back here, these little leaves and bulbs all this little stuff back here. And it's growing and growing and it's now maturing. That's three years of a seedling in the same pot. I still don't have to change it. I could if I wanted to, and I might need to because I need that little white pot. However, do not disturb. How to keep the faith. Yes, how to keep the faith. Stay busy, <laughs> stay busy, stay patient. In my opinion, when it comes to seedlings, there is no room for boredom. They are so much work that it is hard in my books not to lose faith because you're still messing around, you're still dappling around. The biggest part is patience. These guys were bought at the same time as this one, so you can see the difference of progress and what an orchid's attribute also determines how it develops as a seedling. They all acclimated pretty much at the same time but these guys are showing much better response simply because they are different orchids. They are Cattleya crosses and I can't take out the tags because they are now root bound. Ah, this one is, this one I can. Meliana Andresen, so that's Eximia and Blue Princess. Now these guys, I say keep the faith. These are my examples, just keep the faith. Acclimating after 15, to 17 months of doing nothing in a pot. And then last year I repotted them because I saw that the ceramus was getting nasty and looking like much darker and more algae than this one. And lo and behold, there were so many roots in the pot, nothing was happening on the surface, so many roots in the pot, I could bump them up a size. So as I can say to keep the faith, keep working with them, caring for them, flushing them, I know that we all want the blooms to come as soon as possible, but when buying seedlings, know that you have 15 to 17 month acclimating process to deal with before even actually seeing something happen. And last year when I repotted these guys, I finally did so when this growth started to grow. In the seedling pot, I got this growth to grow and I, didn't, I still didn't move it until I could see another growth coming out that had a little bit more of a size jump when it was in a growing stage, which is very, very obvious to recognize when you see a seedling growing. Okay, that little bump down there looks a little bit bigger. And the same with this one. This one was only repotted, but there's no need to repot this one now for another two or three years either unless something goes horribly wrong, but I very much doubt it. So keep the faith, keep working with the seedlings. They are a lot, a lot of work. Eventually though, they will pull through if you had a very healthy seedling to begin with. This is all just as a reminder with no supplemental humidity, none of that. And it can be done if you have 
all the kit and caboodle at your disposition, that is even better. So just to wrap this up, I know this is really, really a long video, but I find that seedlings are such an aspect in my life and how I treat them, that it is very difficult to point at one seedling as, as an example when trying to go through all the little quirks and issues that they might pose, and you think it's you, it is not. Flushing is fundamental no matter which media to use. Flush in the summer, every three days, in the winter, every five days. Every flush, 40 parts per million of seaweed, bearing in mind that that is not a fertilizer. If in organic growing, higher nitrogen needs to be accommodated for to help with the growth. And in my case, I just have a balanced fertilizer of the MSU formula. I don't have to worry about my nitrogen levels at this stage because I am not growing in organic media. High water retentive media, no matter the size of the roots, high water retentive media. When they then start to mature, one can say, okay, now we can pipe down, like I did with my Velotina video, the repot, we can pipe down on the seedling treatment with much higher water retentive media. But at the early stages of any process with regards to a seedling, it is best to have high, high water retentive media and then just make sure the oxygen goes through that pot on a regular basis with flushes. Seedlings are a lot of work. Keeping the faith, keep working with the seedlings. It is very satisfying, it is very rewarding. It can be extremely frustrating to begin with, but I can assure you that a healthy plant and with the babying that a seedling needs, you will always have a successful blooming orchid in about five years. And that is my final, final point. If you buy a seedling that says three years from blooming, always add another two years to that because of the 15 to 17 month acclimating time frame that the seedlings will require when they reach your home. So it is not you doing anything wrong why your orchid won't bloom in three years. It is because of the nature of seedlings and how they have to fight to get accustomed to where they are now. It'll add another at least two years to the blooming maturity, my opinion. That is how I see the growth of seedlings. I hope that it is as rewarding for everybody that watches this video to see a seedling come onto its own as it is for me. I hope that with some of the pointers I've mentioned today that the frustration can be lifted. And I hope that there are no more concerns with regards to why is my seedling not doing anything. Turns out it is a good thing that it's not doing anything because that also means it is not declining. And I want to say thank you very, very much to the channels that have responded to this Care Collab Alert. And I really, really hope Paige and anybody else that ends up watching this video, that this little series is going to be of great help. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time, for your patience, for watching. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.